guys, midfielders, we love looking at them, we love talking about them, we love buying them, we love using them. So today in the video, guys, we're going to be talking about dynamic midfielders for uh, so rare SO5. So midfielders, guys, before we get right into the video, it's a position where you're going to need a lot of stable cards that, you know, are playing, can score well, etc. Some of the gambles we make can go, you know, we, we can look at guys that are injured, in and out of form, a bit streaky, you know, that kind of thing. Today we're looking for dynamic midfielders, guys that can turn their hands to anything. So they may not go and get 10, 15 goals a season. They may only get four goals and maybe five assists or something. But the scores that they tick in with are fairly, you know, dynamic, consistent. And they've got the potential to shoot up to those big green numbers. Before you watch any more of the video, make sure you like it, subscribe to the channel, blah, blah, blah. Uh, and let's get stuck into it. Now, the European midfielders is really where... The battles can be won and lost on SO5 tournaments, whether it be All-Stars, Under-23s or the specific regions. The collection I've got of European midfielders is a collection of guys I've scouted out and bought cheap. A bunch of rewards, obviously, because I've done really well with tournaments, that kind of thing. A couple of Super Bears dotted around. But every single one of them, when I've been buying them, there's been a singular purpose around them. Some of them might be like Ungo Mars, a bit of transfer speculation. But guys like Jao Mario, Azielinski... Even, even the Cuisons, I guess, um, um, Kamada. These are all guys, Wurtz and uh, Dorsch. These are all guys that I expect to utilise like often, 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 often. Because midfielders, yeah, they get rotated depending on shape and you know different other bits and pieces. But the key midfielders drive teams to success, you know. So if you have a key midfielder in your team, a steady Eddie kind of guy, you can almost guarantee most managers will have their favourites and they'll pick them week in, week in, week out. Um, you may have some guys like Cengiz Under, for example, it's Europa League only or vice versa, League only and not uh, European football so far this year. There's a lot of different cuts. Now, the first guy I'd be looking at if I was looking for a midfielder at the moment, um, especially for like, a champion Europe lineup or even a global all-star, Marcus Lorente is right at the top of that list. 25 years of age, um, <sighs> Who did Real Madrid sign him from? He played for Real Madrid. I think it might have been Sociedad. So the guy has a bit of a pedigree around him. And he's had a great season. Atleti are doing great this year. This guy is a big part of that. He's almost playing as like a false 10 um, kind of situation. Very solid and very underpriced for, you know, how well Atleti are going to do. The scores he can produce, even without, you know, necessarily goal contributions. But just because Atleti midfielders will go box to box, winning the ball, passing the ball, etc. <laughs> And if you can get this guy on auction for less than a you know a fifth of a coin, I think you'll you'll get a lot of life out of him at 25 years of age. And the way Atleti and Simeone are going now, um, you could easily get Liverpool games and also Sooner game scored really really high. You could easily get a good couple of years out of this guy, no problem whatsoever. Now I'm tucking this guy in here as a little bit of an off season one, right? The Russian league doesn't come back to like the 27th of February or something mental like that. And this guy, generally speaking, the rares, as you can see, the average price is 0 0.7, about a coin is what you'd normally expect to pay. Ethereum has appreciated a lot in the last week or two, um, which will play a factor in the fact that he's now less Ethereum, you know, to, to transfer, but also the fact that he is dormant now because he is out of season. 23 years of age in the Russian league, which isn't one of the top five, of course. Pfft. He's one of the hottest midfielders in Europe on these stats. No two ways about it. If the guy plays, he's involved in everything they do. And this is a guy that I term as a must-buy if you have the ability to and you have the need to um, because of his age and his standing in the game. He plays for Croatia. The Euros are on the horizon. A good turnout for Croatia. Easily sees a move to Serie A, the Premier League, La Liga. You name it. Um, so for me, he's a must-buy. Any opportunity you can get him cheap, I would take it. Now, by the time this video goes out, I fully intend to own an ISCO. So check my gallery, see if I've done it yet. Uh, this kind of price level is mental. Mental. ISCO is only 28. He's been an amazing world-class player for how many years? Yeah, he's had some problems with injury and whatever this year. His scores are terrible. And that's why the price of him will be so rock bottom now. But this guy is top, 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 top tier. Him, Modric, Cruz, Casemiro. What a midfield they've had over the last bunch of years. And you've got a great opportunity to get this guy super cheap because the scores just aren't there at the moment. But we all know when he comes back and he gets fit again, he's back in that team. He's going to be shooting greens week in, week out. And um, I highly recommend if you can still get him for this type of price, you do it at your earliest opportunity. Again, Real Madrid is a bundle only team, so you'll be looking in the secondary market for this guy rather than the primary, unless you're going to go out and get a bundle. But I think the price of this guy is genuinely criminal. 
Now, there's a few players I'm dropping in these videos that I've been trying to keep for myself so I can buy them <laughs> before I talk about them in a video. But there's just no getting away from Brozovic. He is solid. He's been um, he's been a really solid player for the last couple of seasons in our, you know, for the, the, the success they've had trying to climb up the table and overturn Juventus. The price of a rare of him now, I think, is very appealing. He's more of a super rare target for me, to be honest with you. Uh, he plays all the time, whether it be 3-5-2, 4-4-2, 4-3-3, whatever shape in our Conte roll out with, the guy is going to feature. And as you can see, the scores are very solid, very credible. And he's got those big greens in him, which will help you get far up on the SO5 rankings to get on the podiums and that kind of thing. At 28, he's still... I, I'd say he's, that's him hitting prime now. You know, last year, this year, all the way up to 31 is where you'd expect a player like this to get the best results. So picking a player up in prime... For this kind of price level, you're talking about, what, 50, 60 quid? In a champion Europe team, Inter Milan, expect him to finish top three, top four in that division. His scores are amazing. Inter do have a really packed midfield. They've just signed Papu Gomez as well. So we'll wait to see how that goes. This guy, I don't see getting usurped from the team. I think he's a key, key player for Conte. And I think the addition of a Papu Gomez, along with Martinez and Lukaku ahead of him, you might actually see an, an increase in his scores over the second half of the season. You might get more strings of greens coming. Would not surprise me one iota. Now for me, at the moment, very underappreciated midfielder from a so rare perspective to how often Pirlo's picking him when he's fit and available and the kind of scores he can get. He's got a wee assist here and there. He's got a wee goal here and there already. He started his Juventus career really strongly. And the sort of player he is at Schalke, he did seem a wee bit kind of all over the place. You know, he would be... Dropping back, it you know, he'd be maybe playing midfield, and you'd find them sitting in between centre backs and stuff like that, just because Schalke were such a mess. But at Juve, I've seen this to somebody privately, I can't remember who, um, but he strikes me as a Marquisio. I think that's what Pirlo, I think that's the role Pirlo's dropping him in. And if that becomes true, and you see that throughout the season, you'll see this kind of the last five, 15, and 40 averages we just seen with Brozovic. You'll see that with McKenny. I can almost guarantee it if he continues the sort of play he's been having and the sort of um, minutes he's been getting under Pirlo, that'll happen no problem at all. Being American, being at Juventus, he's got an extra little asterisk on him in terms of collectability. And the sort of price you could pick him up for the now is, is crazy mental for what I expect him to deliver this season. And even with, even with some of the Schalke scores, they did actually pretty okay, even though they were awful. Now, I'm just going to throw this guy in as a little bit of a random, okay? I just won this guy as a reward, and I was like, okay, who the fuck's this? And um, he's really cheap, and I was like, wow, his, last, his averages are actually solid. When you look at them, yeah, they're there, you know, 80s, 80s, 70s, really solid. You know, I, can't, I just can't say anything else. Solid, solid, solid. And again, the secondary market price is quite fair. If you're needing a, a challenger, you're at midfielder. Dirt cheap at um, 24 years of age. This guy seems pretty solid and yeah, just for share. One of the first signings I made on this platform, I was really excited to get him. The, one of the main reasons I bought him uh, so quickly was he wasn't available on Football Index and that was my kind of strategy at first was like, who's not on Football Index I would really love to have and that was a big part of the first or who's not good on Football Index, who I wish was. That was my first kind of clutch of buys and this guy was maybe further fourth in that list. Um, when he plays, he's been super solid and Leon are starting to develop this midfield now with Jean Lucas, with Lucas Paqueta, with uh, what's the guy with the funny haircut, Kakare, and Bruno Gomanich. They're building a very young, very dynamic midfield and um, yeah, the guy's last scores, he's got a few reds in there coming from the bench and a DNP and whatever. But the sort of player this guy is, when he starts, the scores are there. And I think a lot of clubs across the continent have been over-rotating for good reason, you know, just with the, the, the congestion of fixtures. I think we're going to see that ease. Leon are not in Europe, so as their domestic schedule kind of thins out, um, I'd expect to see this guy play 90-95% of matches quite easily. And again, even the secondary market price you could pick him up for is crazy good. About 60 quid for somebody who has got solid greens in him if he starts. That's quite easy to expect that going into a game week. I think there's good bang for buck at a team you would expect next season to be in Europe. And at 23 years of age, he goes into under-23 lineup still. And next year and the years beyond, he might move to a bigger and better club. Or Leon might get their act together and rival PSG at some point with the midfield that they're putting together. Now, this guy is the final guy on the list, okay? And you're probably thinking, Benjamin Andre, what, a, what an average guy. Yeah, he's solid average. He's 30. He plays week in, week out for Lille. Lille are currently like second in the league. Still going strong in Europe as well. Um, the guy, you don't get much, much price competition. Even his SR 
is very, very well priced, quite attractive. And when you look at his scores, he's a rock solid little midfielder. He'll play week in, week out. Xhaka's playing alongside him now. I think Xhaka drops out for Renato Sanchez when he comes back fit. The guy's just super cheap. Yeah, he's 30. You've maybe got two or three years left in him at best. But even in the short term, you can have this guy get you up and running in an all-star in a champion Europe and just help you get some prizes for how cheap he is. I highly recommend this guy. is a value purchase. And as you'll see, guys, it's not all-star names in my midfield. There's, you know, like Gel, Gel Patil here is a solid, solid little player. Cost me a tenner. You know, you need these solid little scorers in and around your team so that when you're going into game weeks, you've got some of these cheaper options to help pad out if your bigger options are getting rotated out. Guys, I hope you've enjoyed the video. Like, subscribe, share, retweet, all that good stuff. Stay out of trouble and I will see you on the next one.